Hi, it's Brenda with Luke's here to do an overview of the Designer Sapphire 85, an embroidery and sewing combo machine. Let's get started. Let's talk about what comes with the Designer Sapphire 85. First of all, it comes with two books, both a user guide and a fabulous illustrated sampler book that shows you illustrations of all the designs embedded for embroidery along with the techniques, stitch counts, and colors. So great reference materials. Also included with the machine is a good selection of accessories. So let's start with the feet. Of course included is your standard sewing foot. I have that installed on the machine. You'll see it in just a second. Then we have our B foot, which is for our decorative stitches. We have our D foot, which is a joining foot. The H foot, which is a Teflon foot for sewing over vinyls or fabric that has a sticky surface. We have our overcast foot, our zipper foot, a darning foot, also, of course, an embroidery foot, and I'll be showing you how to install that in shortly. And then two different buttonhole feet. One plugs in is my automatic buttonholer, and one is the manual buttonholer. Also comes with a walking foot for extra traction when you're feeding multiple layers, and a second foot for my walking foot, screwdriver, spool caps, quilting guides, a single hole thread plate. Also for embroidery, it comes with a USB stick so I can download designs from the internet, some clips to help me hold my project steady when I'm using the hoops for embroidery. And speaking of hoops, the embroidery unit comes with three hoops. One is my five by five. You can see it's hooped with the project. We'll be using that in just a second, as well as two additional hoops that are much larger. This is my eight by 10 hoop and my largest, which is my eight by 14 hoop. All right, let's get started with this sewing. What we're going to do is tell the machine what we'd like to do. Sew, quilting, embroidery, or learn more about our machine. This is a capacitive screen, and what that means is that I can touch and make choices on the screen of what I'd like. I can use my hand, of course, or I can use a soft stylus. So we're going to explore sewing. I tell the machine what fabric I'm going to sew on, quilter's cotton, and I'm gonna to say touch new to get started. All right, so my stitch menu comes up. Well, before we can stitch, and we'll be exploring this screen a little bit more in just a second, let's go ahead and wind a bobbin. I'm going to take my thread. I am going to go down here through the tension disc, up through the gate at the top. Over here is my bobbin. I have it placed with the Viking logo face up on the bobbin spindle. Taking my thread and I'm going to wind it around the top and around the top of that bobbin, it will catch that thread for me. Okay, and at that point, I'm going to take and push the little sensor towards the bobbin. You can see my screen has changed. It says bobbin winding. This changes the speed when I'm ready to go. I'm gonna to touch the button and I'm going to wind my bobbin. There's a sensor when it's full, it will stop. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right now. And there's a handy cutter right here by the bobbin. When I pull it off and I'm ready to go. Let's install our bobbin. Remember that Viking logo is face up. I drop the bobbin down into the case and this thread is gonna go into the notch right here. I usually put my finger on the bobbin, thread goes into the notch, you'll feel a sweet little click as the thread goes into the spring. I go around this guide down here and then I'm going to replace my bobbin cover, use a pair of scissors and leave about a half an inch tail of my bobbin thread outside that bobbin cover. That allows for smooth pickup of this bobbin thread by my upper thread. Let's thread the sapphire. I'm gonna take my thread, go up here, behind the metal plate and down, up, down. We're gonna make a U-turn and come up into the take-up lever and it will catch it coming down here. Now we're gonna navigate the needle threader. So I'm gonna come down Put my take my thread and push it back here into the lower thread guide. Okay, so it snicks into position. I've got plenty of thread here. I'm going to go ahead and lower my foot just to get it out of the way. Using my 
left hand, I push this down, the needle threader comes down, the thread goes underneath the hook here, it comes over, and I like to think of this as a monster's mouth. When I put the thread in the monster's mouth, I hold it up, with not taunt, but with just holding it up, and when I go like this, the needle threader pulls that thread through the eye of the needle, giving me a loop that I pull, and my needle is threaded and ready to go. So we have the machine it's set up for sewing, and right now we are in our utility stitch menu, and to expand this menu, I can take my finger, touch on the tab indicating the zigzag, and it expands, showing me all the stitches in that category. And in fact, I can slide up to show more stitches, and I can swipe to the right to show the next menu of stitches. In fact, down here at the bottom, I see that I have stitch menus going A all the way through T. And these menus also will swipe so I can see. So for example, I can go to an H menu, which I happen to know are the children's stitches. Lots of fun things. And let's, um, let's go ahead and pick this coffee cup stitch. So I'm going to select that. And to compress this menu, again, I touch the same tab at the top take my finger away, it compresses the menu, and I see these sweet little coffee cups. Okay, so a couple of things that we've learned when we look on this, the screen is it's recommending the correct foot for me in sewing, okay, any different technique, it recommends the correct foot for me. I can also take a look at this stitch and I can change the width of the stitch right here. Now, if I'm doing a straight stitch, what that will do is that will actually change the needle position. When I have a decorative stitch, as I hit the minus sign, you'll see these coffee cups are becoming narrower. Right here, this is the length of stitch, and when I hit the minus to shorten the stitch, that cup of coffee became an espresso cup. So you can see visually the changes I've made, both the width and the length. We see the coffee cups are pointing to the right, right here on my screen. I can touch the button, and it will flip the stitch horizontally or vertically. Okay, so lots of changes you can make to dial in and tailor the stitches that you want on the Sapphire 85. So these are our stitches. Um, the other components to the interface are the hard keys, which are over here. And we see my foot up and foot down button. Now, if I have the foot up and I go to sew, I can just touch the go pedal and it will drop the presser foot down and I'm off to the races. We see a little LED light here, right where the button says fix. What that does when I turn that button on or select it is it will put a knot on the underside of my project rather than the old method of reverse stitching to seal in my stitches. That fix puts a knot and seals in my, uh, my stitching. Right above that, we see a pair of scissors. By touching that button, it will cut the upper and the lower thread from my project. Handy. Over here, we have the needle down button. Because this is a machine that is favored by quilters, a lot of times when we are sewing, we're going to stop with the needle down position. You'll notice that when that needle dropped down, the foot jumped up. That's called a pivot foot. That allows me to take and move my project from side to side or to move it while I'm going down a curve. Touch that button again, the needle's back up. I, if I were sewing or piecing, I would just leave that button on and it, every time I stop, the needle will be in the down position. We have the speed on the machine. We have the stop and start stop. Now start, stop and start stop. These are controls that we use with machine embroidery. And we see the U-turn, which means my reverse stitching. Stop and start stop. That leads us right into embroidery and that's our next section. To change into embroidery mode on the Sapphire, we're gonna go right up here to the top right button. And that changes our screen into the embroidery section of the machine. And similarly, we can touch a tab at the top to expand the menus. So we see menus of designs down here, just like we saw with our stitch menus. These are menus of embroidery designs and I can swipe through. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select well, the C menu. We see these are children's designs. And I say, oh, I wonder if there are more. By touching the tab at the top, it will expand and show me all the designs that are in that section. And of course, I can scroll up, 
to see more designs. And there are lots of lovely designs embedded on this Sapphire 85. So we're going to go ahead and pick a design. Um, and of course, I always like to pick the bug. I put my finger on the bug and it loads the design. I'm going to center it by touching right here in the center of my compass. And at that point, I'm able to move my design around. I'm able to spin the design around. I'm able to change the size of my design. Lots of changes. I can flip him in different directions. Okay, so we've got our design selected and I'm going to move him down and I wanna show you some lettering because that is one of the things that we like to use our embroidery for. We're talking about fonts and lettering and monogramming and text is a huge thing in design right now. So let's look and see what fonts are included on the Sapphire 85. So I touch the A and we see some different fonts come up. Now these first five are actually stitch fonts, which means I can use those in sewing for a quick labeling of things. These other fonts down here are the beautiful embroidery fonts. So I have several script, several block fonts. Okay, and then I also, down lower, I have some fonts that are just huge that go all the way up to 60 millimeters. So those are very, very large. We're gonna go ahead and choose Clarendon, and I'm gonna choose Clarendon 20. The thing that's nice on the machine is we've got a QWERTY keyboard. It looks like a typewriter, right? A keyboard. So I'm going to type spring, S-P-R-I-N-G. Okay, and I've got spring. I'm gonna hit my check mark. And when I see spring and I say, ooh, I'm a little bit too big. I'm gonna put this menu away. I can actually grab spring and make it smaller and move it into position. Okay, so now it fits within the hoop. And as you saw, I had a lot of different fonts and different sizes. Now talking about sizing, we saw where I just changed the size of that font so it would fit in my hoop. I'm gonna take this bug and we see that the bug is 10,000 stitches. Actually, I think the bug is about 10, 7,000 stitches. I need to make him smaller. Here's my stitch count. When I use the resizing tool on the Viking, labeled resizing here, and I make this bug smaller, quite a bit smaller. I mean, dramatically smaller. I confirm that with my check mark. Now, instead of that 10,000 stitch for spring plus my bug, it's 6,000 stitches. So this is important. When I change the size of a design within resize on my Viking, it actually takes stitches away or adds stitches into the design to maintain the integrity of the design. That is nice. So your stitching turns out beautiful. All right, so we've got our design. At this point, I'm gonna to touch the word go down here in the bottom right corner, and that takes me to my stitch out screen. Right here, we have some reminders. It's asking me, what hoop did you select? What embroidery foot are you using? Some color options, basting, if I wanna use my cutter, and my options are right here. I hit continue. We hear the embroidery arm sliding into position and now it's asking me to attach the hoop. So let's talk about hooping our project. Let's hoop our project. So we've got our hoop, it comes in two pieces. This is the outer frame and this is the inset. So I'm going to take a piece of stabilizer, which is that, that papery, it's almost like interfacing. And I'm gonna put that down on the hoop. Then I'm going to take my project. In this case, I'm just using a, a simple piece of fabric and I'm going to lay that on top of the stabilizer. This is the second portion of the hoop. I'm going to match up the triangles here at the bottom of the hoop with the triangles here on the bottom of the hoop. I'm going to gently press this inset down into the hoop. Okay, and here I have a thumb screw to tighten or loosen. So right now I'm gonna pull my fabric taunt, okay? Then use the thumb screw to tighten it into place. And when I have this hooped properly, this should be very tight like a drum, okay? Let's take and put our embroidery foot on the machine for um, our next step. We see where there is a little notch here and there's a square side. This is going to screw right onto the shaft of the machine. 
this portion here actually rides the needle clamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my foot and I'm getting it sort of into position, but I'm going to lower that needle so that clamp comes down here. That makes it a whole lot easier to get that into position. So I've got it into position and now I'm going to take the screw and it goes right here on the side. I'm gonna get it started. and then finish tightening that up with my screwdriver. And now we're ready to attach our hoop. Okay, so I have my hoop, it's ready to go. My foot is installed. I had parked the embroidery arm to the left, so I'm gonna go to current stitch position, which in this case, of course, is the beginning of our design. To install my hoop, I'm going to take this bracket here and it's going to slide right in this channel. So it goes under the foot. And I'm gonna show you here just a second and pull this back. Okay, so you see where this slides right into that channel. I'm going to push it forward. And you're gonna hear it click. Okay, that means it is installed correctly. All right, so now to begin our stitching, all I have to do is grab my top thread right here, and we're going to be doing our first color stop, which is right here. It shows me the different color stops to make my design. I do want to show you one other thing that I think is really unique with a Viking, this little flower here. Notice our first color is the light blue. When I touch that flower, the only thing on the screen that lights up is that color block. So if I said, oh, I'm in the second color block, the green shows or the dark green, well, we're gonna be doing our first color block. But what's nice about that is you know exactly where each of these colors is and what order to have them lined up and ready to go. So I'm gonna turn that off and we see our entire design. All right, so we're ready to go to begin embroidery. I'm gonna go over here on the hard keys and I'm going to hit start. Okay, we heard some noises and what that was. That was my cutter. And we're doing this bug in a nice burgundy red, so it shows up. We're doing our first color stop. We'll notice here the first color stop down here on the control panel. I see that first color is 422 stitches. We're stitching very rapidly. We're passing the 300 stitch mark. This is the color we're doing first in the on deck sec uh, section right here is our next color block. Now we finished our first color and look what happens. The machine stops. You heard that crunchy noise and what that was was my cutter. It cut my thread and now it's indicating that I need to change the thread and go to the second one. So at that point, I am going to take my scissors. We always cut our thread up here at the top, pull it out through the needle. And as I said, remember you heard that cut it cut my thread and now I'm ready to install, and we know how to thread the machine, my second color. When I'm finished with that, I hit my check mark, I hit my go button, and we're off to the races with our second color block. Okay, so I'm looking at my control, oh, hmm, I wonder what this button is for. Well, when you have a Viking, there's the question mark feature. When I touch the question mark and highlight it in blue, I can actually touch any button on the screen and it will identify it for me. So my question mark is highlighted. This is the button in question, which is a sweet little heart down here. And it pops up and lets me know that this is the smart save feature. So what this does is if I am embroidering and I need to stop for, maybe it's for dinner or maybe um, I need to go out somewhere, whatever. When I am embroidering and I hit the smart save button, now I'm gonna actually choose a feature it lets me know that I'm going to stop and it's going to remember exactly where I left off. Not only will it remember what color block I'm in, but what stitch I'm at. And if I've made any adjustments, it will remember all of this. And when I turn the machine on and activate the Smart Save Recall, it will take me back to that exact spot to continue on with my embroidery. Successfully saved. I tell you what, this is a fabulous machine. If you don't have one yet, you should stop in, visit Luke's in Springdale, and pick one up for yourself. See you soon.